Thank you very much, Waihiga. Yes, I am at KQ Hangar 2. And right here we have the Zambezi River. It is a plane that is expected to make the inaugural flight to the USA on the October 28th. But so far there is still one requirement that Kenya needs to fulfill, and this is a requirement by the Federation Aviation Association Authority that will allow the KQ to fly directly to the United States and with the U.S. Under Secretary of Commerce Gilbert Kaplan in the country, it is a clear indication that these plans are gaining momentum as we plan on how KQ will be, as KQ plans on how they will be able to fly. And as you can see, that is the plane that will make the inaugural flight to the United States come the 28th. It is a flight that will be going directly to New York. And we're just going to have a feel of this plane, Wahiga, and also joining me right now, it's some of the pilots who are able to fly the Dreamliner 787. It is a, a wide body aircraft. It is used for long haul flights. And this means that there shall be no stop between Nairobi to New York. And I'd like to start with Captain Irene. And I'm quite impressed. There's also gender equality over here. Uh, Captain Irene, how does it feel to be able to prepare for the US direct flights come the October 28th? Oh, we're very excited. And we have the perfect equipment for that flight. Yes. How many pilots are able to fly this plane? Like by the time it leaves Nairobi, is it one pilot we're talking about with uh, one first officer? How many? Just paint the picture for us. We'll have what we call augmented crew because it's a very long flight. Uh, we will have two sets of crew because somewhere one will do the first leg and the second set of crew will do the second leg. The aircraft has what we call bunkers. It's like beds where we can rest. So yeah, we'll have two sets of crew. And in terms of the plane, the Dreamliner itself, uh, what are some of the spe specifications the plane has? You know, I'm imagining, uh, is it 14, 16 hour flight to the US? That is quite a long haul flight mm -hmm. to make the passenger comfortable. What do we have on this plane? It's actually the most comfortable aircraft you have for long haul right now on the market mm -hmm. because what we call pressure altitude, we maintain it at a lower altitude than other aircraft. So you you actually your body feels like you're at 6,000 feet and we have humidity as well controlled in the 787 so a really long haul flight will feel like you've just made a skip and a hop okay. yeah if I can just uh, rope in uh, Captain Didarali are uh, being able I don't know I can speak to both of you um, the plane itself are you also going to make the inaugural flight are you excited about this what does this mean to you as a pilot to be able to make this inaugural flight well we're all excited it's a new route um, long flight, augmented crew, so it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an excitement for all of us. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the frequency, can you just remind us how frequent this will be? And as a pilot, what are some of the requirements that you have been able to undergo in order to fly this? Is, are there any specifications, anything different you had to do? Yes, we undergo the training for, for the US route. We have um, augmented crew like Captain Irene mentioned. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, generally, it's the same way we fly to any other route. And lastly, Mr. Odero, uh, you're a fast officer, I believe. I'm, I'm guessing from the stripes. Uh, okay, yes. Uh, how, tell me, how, how do you feel about this? And also looking at the plane and seeing it's just a couple of months before the inaugural flight. Yeah, just a couple of months. Uh, as a uh, uh, captain said, we're excited. Yeah, it's a new route, you know. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing for us also. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much and congratulations to be on this flight. We just were here, we are just going to make a brief. I know so far we've not been allowed to make it to the very entrance of the plane because of the event that is supposed to take place. But uh, this is the staircase of getting into this Dreamliner 787, which I have mentioned earlier is known as the Zambezi River. It is going to be able to carry uh, I think about 350 passengers, passengers that will be able to board from the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport all the way to the JF Kennedy International Airport in New York. And we shall be able to bring you more details. We do expect the Cabinet Secretary of Transport, James Masharia, to come in here. We do expect the KQ management, including the KQ CEO, Sebastian. Mikos. We also expect the chairman of KQ, Michael Joseph, to be here. Among other CSs, we expect Aidan Muhammad, the CS of Trade and Industrialization, and we also expect Najib Balala, the CS of Tourism. Wahiga? All right, Mombi, uh, just tell me a little bit. What else do we expect the U.S. Under Secretary of Commerce to do whilst in Kenya, in addition to, of course, being at that particular luncheon? 
Uh, apart from the partic this particular luncheon where it is just uh, gearing momentum towards the direct flights and as much as KQ is yet to get the final approval from the, feder for the, for, from the Federal Aviation Authority, uh, we also expect the Undersecretary to be at the UN headquarters tomorrow where there is going to be a forum between the Kenya and the US uh, business delegates. We, we so far understand that over... Over 300 delegates have been able to come into the country, big companies from the U.S. expecting to cement trade ties with the country. Considering we, we do understand the direction that the President of the United States, Donald Trump, has been taking in, in terms of trade, making sure that his country is able to gain more. Kenya just trying to position itself to be able to continue with cordial relationships in terms of business. President Uru Kenyatta will also be at that event tomorrow where he shall be the official, uh, the speaker, the opening. He will be at the opening ceremony. So that is what we know so far in regards to Gilbert Kaplan, that is the U.S. Under Secretary of Commerce, his, uh, his plan here while he will be in the country. Wehika? Mombi, um, as much as, of course, all of Kenya will celebrate when uh, direct flights become available, you know, God willing, from October 2018, nevertheless, it doesn't directly mean that uh, Kenya Airways will now go to full profitability. Remember, there's competition on the continent. We know other carriers already do direct flights to the United States, I believe. South African Airways does, Ethiopian Airlines, amongst others. Talk to me a little bit about the kind of competition Kenya Airways will have to, you know, f battle with, even as this new route opens up. There is quite a lot of competition in this area because uh, just before KQ begins its inaugural flight to the U.S., to New York, we do expect that Rwanda Air is going to commence their direct flights on the 1st of August. And this just means that Rwanda Air will be able to do this before KQ. And also we also know Turkish Airlines flies directly to the U.S. We also have Ethiopia Airlines that flies directly to Washington, D.C. Among other airlines, that is Emirates, the Gulf Airlines are able to fly directly to the United States. And this is quite, it is a space that in as much as Kenya Airways is coming in, it is coming in at a time where the competition is quite intense and they will have to really focus on the marketing strategy. And that is why Wahiga, as we've been able to see so far, there have been plans in regards to a public-private partnership between JKIA and KQ that will see KQ manage the airport, that is the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. This includes the ground operations, the cargo, the maintenance of the airport. Airport. It is a system that other countries are using, like when you look at the Gulf carriers, when you look at Ethiopia, where the government is coming in to help the airline cement its position so as to be able to grow their economy. It is a position, it is an agreement, the first agreement of a kind that is expected to be signed by about September, though Michael Joseph, having spoken to him last week, he mentioned that this agreement should be signed by December. And once that happens, it is going to be almost like the government is going to be having much more power in regards to KQ, and this will be able to boost post KQ's revenues going forward and once that is in place it might actually have a competitive advantage when it comes to the direct flights because KQ will be considered as a vessel towards growing the economy and just not as an airline that is expected to make profitability for its shareholders. Wahiga? Mumbi, I know we're keeping you on the line for long, but we're really enjoying those beautiful pictures of the plane uh, that you are, you know, on the stairs of at the moment. So I'll, I'll still keep you on the line with one more question. Talk to me a little bit about what you've told me so far and its connection, if any, with the plan by Kenya Airways and Kenya Airports Authority to partner in the running of the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. How does all this fit into KQ's grand plan? Where does Kenya Airports Authority fall in all this? What do you know about this? Uh, about the partnership that is, uh, they are, it is, so far the negotiations have begun in regards to the partnership that Michael Joseph was able to confirm in regards to KQ and uh, and JKIA, that is KAA, deciding on just how much power will KQ have over the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. But uh, they say that it is a careful, it is something that they have to be carefully crafted. Because we're here where we have reached, where KQ has reached, we have seen KQ move from very turbulent times and so far they are optimistic that 2018 is going to be a good year for them. But so far, considering we've not been able to see the half year results, there is still the full year results that are expected. And again, the competition that has to do with the airline industry, KQ feeling there's a 
located when it comes to competition uh, the agreement is the only the agreement is what KQ feels is going to be able to help them be able to manage or compete competitively. So far, Wahiga KQ has been, when we look at the shareholding of the government, I believe currently the government is at about 39%. Uh, they own 39% of KQ. It is uh, still, uh, when it comes to making decisions, there are other parties that have to come in play in order to be able to make the decision. And that is why the government is also determined to ensure that this agreement comes comes to pass. President Uru Kenyatta has said it is an agreement he also expects should have been signed by the end of the year. We just the hope that KQ from the turbulent times of having gotten losses of 25 billion shillings, I believe in the 2016 financial year, right now they are looking at a, a lesser loss. Uh, they were able to reduce their loss, but still there are concerns on just how much can be done for the airline. But with this agreement, KQ is very hopeful, Wahiga, that they shall be able to sail through their turbulent times and yes, just be able to move on and be grow the economy, which will be the key issue, grow the economy. And they've been pushing for Kenyans to support them in doing that. I don't know, Wahiga, if you do travel KQ when you travel, but yeah, that is